I'm delighted to say Heather O'Reilly, Shelburne's latest recruit, is with us in studio. Heather, how are you? I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me. So uh, nice of you to bring the Charlotte, North, North Carolina weather to Ireland so that we could all <laughs> bask in a bit of sunshine. Yeah, I know. Everybody's talking about rainy Ireland and I get here and it's bright and beautiful. So I'm happy to do that if I uh, had anything to do with it. How is your acclimatization going? What, what's that like? It's good. I mean, um, I came over here with, I have two little kids. Uh, one's two years old and one's eight months old. So uh, you can imagine for the first week there was some time adjustment problems. It was like a symphony of cries in the middle of the night with uh, with jet lag and things like that. But once we all sorted that out, it's all good. And, uh, you know, driving's a little bit of a challenge for me right now because I'm used to the other side of the road. So uh, I haven't I haven't been behind the wheel too much, which is probably a good thing for for the the sake of the country of Ireland. Um, yeah, but it, but it's good. The the squad has been really kind and welcoming, and um, for them, I think obviously you know they are in the middle of the season, so to have any sort of addition um, will take you know a number of games to kind of get reacclimated and and to meet each other and. Um, listen, I, th- I don't think it's a secret. Like, I have been out of the game for two and a half years well, now. Ask, yeah, so, so yeah. I mean, part of it for me is is getting up to speed and um, getting my fitness back. I mean, certainly I've been playing playing five aside and things like that and charity matches. And it's not like I'm – I actually ran the Boston Marathon a couple of months ago. So I've been staying fit. But obviously it's quite a bit different than, like, having competitive matches on the weekend. So – Sorry, I was just going to say, like you said, you've mentioned that it's the the opportunity to play in the Champions League is is a big factor in your decision to return. But it must also just be the competitive factor. Like you mentioned, playing five aside, you're playing soccer aid. You've, I suppose there's a competitive aspect to running a marathon, to say the, the least. But is there just was there just something missing on a competitive level when it comes to the, the football you were playing? Well, I think so. I think any um, or most competitive athletes will tell you, like when you hang up your boots, like not much compares, right? I mean, you try to find you know, those things that kind of get those endorphins pumping the same way that like competitive sport does. And I do some TV work. I do some coaching. Of course I play, uh, you know, in small games and, and things like that. But uh, I love football. I just love playing. So, um, but the champions league aspect, like you mentioned was a huge um, determinant of me coming out. I think I, you know, I've won world cups. I've won, Olympics. Um, I, I've won a lot of trophies in in the U.S. I came over to Arsenal, played for a year and a half, um, won there as well. So uh, I've done a lot of wonderful things, but I never played Champions League, and it always kind of bummed me out that I never did. When I was at Arsenal, we got third the year before, and at that point, only two teams qualified, so I sort of missed out. So it's always just kind of been like this burning thing that I've wanted to to do, and uh, I thought when I you know hung up the boots and had had a family that that was probably it for me but here we are I felt pretty good and I wanted to put them back on and and give this a go so who made contact with who how did that happen <laughs> uh, I put myself out there and I wrote uh, a few emails wrote, reached out to Shelbourne and, and just said like hi I'm Heather and I here's my CV and they're like we know who you are like actually Noel King was the the coach of the national team for for many years so we've faced up against each other through the years and with a name like O'Reilly I think back in the day he had done a little bit of research and just reached out to me to see if I wanted to play for Ireland. Actually, my great great grandparents came over in like the early 1900s. So too late. I didn't yes. too late. I didn't actually. I couldn't play for the Irish national team if I wanted to. But anyway, so Noel and I, uh, yeah, we we actually have a long history of knowing of each other. Actually, and one of my earliest memories is not a great memory of playing Ireland because Emma Byrne, the goalkeeper that played for a long time. Uh, she actually broke my leg in 2003. Nice. I was like on the cusp of making the World Cup team as a teenager and working towards this dream. And then ball comes in. I head it past Emma Byrne. It actually, I see it trickling over the goal line into the net, but she came out, cracked my fibula, kept me out of the World Cup. So I had like just, just like lukewarm feelings of the Irish team okay. there for a while. <laughs> but anyways, we've we've rebounded, we've come back. Did you make peace with Emma at any point? You know, we, we did. We're part of, um, actually, it's funny because Emma and I are part of this group. FIFA is, um, 
you know, they're trying to do some positive things, FIFA is, and they're not all bad people, right? And so they've done this pilot program called the the Next 90 of former players. I, I go like this because, you know, I'm not no longer former player. Yeah. I'm back in it. Um, but uh, so Emma and I are part of this group of like 50 or so former players that – um, are part of a, it, it's essentially a year long furthering your education, uh, you know, business skills. And if you want to become a director of a academy and things like that. So they sort of equip you with sort of, um, you know, ways to es- essentially transition to your next steps of your career. So we're Within part of football. this group together. Right. Yeah. In football, or even if you want to do something outside football. Um, and so Emma and I have, of course, re- reunited, and we've bantered a little bit about when she when she crippled me there. <laughs> but uh, and that was kind of one of the the catalysts. So I played in soccer. Eight. I was inspired by Arsen Wenger, who was my manager in the in that fundraiser. He said, "Heather, you are still very good. You should play football still." <laughs> and I said, oh, "Well, maybe I'll think about it." And then I, with Emma Byrne, I was part of this group called The Next 90. So we were all together in Zurich, where the headquarters of FIFA are. And of course, we were doing mostly like classroom sessions and boring stuff. But of course, we wanted to get out in the pitch and, and play like just a fun match. So I played and, and, and again, that gets like the, the juices flowing and the thoughts flying that like maybe I do want to, you know, give this a go again. And so Emma was there when we were like, I literally pulled up the UEFA website and said like, okay, what teams are in the UEFA Champions League? Where would be cool projects? What would be like a fulfilling thing for me to do? Um, And I remember being like, who's S-H-E-L? Because, you know, usually it's like Roma or like Juve. And they're like, that's Shelbourne from Dublin. I said, huh, that could be kind of cool. Um, you know, obviously I have some, some Irish blood in me and, um, and I know a lot of the Irish players. I'm looking right here at a, at a picture of Denise O'Sullivan. I played with Katie McCabe at Arsenal and Louise Quinn at Arsenal as well. So, uh, you know, similar to what England is doing right now in women's football, like, you know, the potential is, uh, is there for I- I- Irish national football to, to, to be a contender. And I hope that they, um have continued success they're playing finland uh, i think next month to try to have a successful qualifying run for the world cup so it was sort of like a project that i was like listen this is uh yeah i knew that it was sort of not a professional league yet um hopefully coming over here will bring some attention to the league and what the women have done at Shelburne FC has been spectacular, winning the league last year. And they work in the shadows a lot. I mean, literally, like, they work and then they play in the evenings. And, you know, we're getting to the point now where, um, yeah, women's football is professionalizing. And, um, and, and yeah, I think that they, they deserve to be, to be seen and appreciated for the athletes that they are. How has the reality of playing for Shelburne differed from the expectation? Hmm. Good question. I think, um, well, I th- I think like, whenever I come over to Europe, I realize that like everybody knows the game, right? Like as in these women have been watching the game ingrained in the sport, uh, whether it's watching Premier League or, or, or whatever it is, supporting your local team. And, and for me, that's different. And in America, like there's a lot of girls that play sports and and you have a lot of good little athletes but they don't like love the game they don't like talk about like oh did you see liverpool like leads over the weekend like and these women are so they have like a deep appreciation for the game so i would say like when i'm on the pitch with the women there is um you can tell that they're behind the curve in certain ways but ahead of it in in others like sometimes like we even went up to Sligo on uh, last weekend and um, some of the finishes and the, the technique and the understanding of the game is quite good. So I think that that has exceeded my expectations. Um, and then in terms of um, differing, I think that like I have been privileged to um, have like a long professional career in the U.S. where I've been paid to be a professional athlete for like 15 years um, and just, you know, there has been, I think, little steps along the way of, of what does professionalism mean? It, it's not only, you know, money, you know, a, a check uh, at twice a month. It's recovery time. Yeah, it's recovery. It's diet. And, yeah. It's um, a lot of things that sort of go into it. So um, that is a little bit different to me and, and still has a little ways to go. But um, the potential is there. So. Uh, yeah, I, I would also say that people are more enthused about me being here, I think, than I thought. Um, 
I think at the end of the day, like, I have been retired for two and a half years. I'm an older player. Um, so, like, I didn't really know how that would be received. We, we but, say experienced. Yeah, exactly. Vintage, vintage. Better with uh, with age, like fine wine. So, uh, no, I think that, like, the reception has been great. I mean, obviously, for me to be here with you guys has been uh, super fun. In your head, how long a project is this for you? Is it strictly this one short season, or are you thinking this might be a year, this could extend? What, what, what do yeah, you... well, the Women's League, uh, you know, it just goes until November 6th is the cup final, right? So that is... Um, sort of a date that I'm kind of keeping in mind. Obviously, we'll see how this Champions League run goes. I mean, I'm a competitor, right? And, like, I'm a winner. I like to say, like, I, I won a lot of things in my career. So I'm going over to Slovenia next week and with the expectation of winning two games. Like, that's just how I'm, how I'm built. And then after that, we'll, we'll be faced up with some other Champions League opponents, and we'll just kind of, like, see where this goes. So I think, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, a short project for me. Like, um, But I'm also learning a lot about Irish sport and... Um, our chairman is this guy named Andrew Doyle, who's um, who's a really exciting guy, and he is doing some great things at Shelbourne FC and has a lot of um, ideas for the future that I think would be interesting to hear more about and seeing if I want to get involved in okay, in, right. in that aspect. So I, I'm up for it, certainly. Um, it's Do a little you, early on to, to say that right now, though. I've sure. only been here for like two No, weeks. totally, but it's just interesting to see what, like, what, what the range of potential outcomes are. Do you want to be a manager at some point? Is that your long-term yeah. goal? Yeah, so I think I'm at the point of my career where I'm kind of testing the water in different ways. I have, uh, I've been kind of on my pathway of, getting my badges, my coaching badges. Like, I have my UEFA B badge. I was hoping to maybe look into getting my UEFA A badge when I'm here, and that just sort of opens some some doors. Um, I do some TV and punditry work as well. Um, but I, I do think that I want to be a manager. Um, I just love this game a lot, so I obviously can't play forever. And so, uh, yeah, leading people and, and working with... Uh, working with teams is is a lot of fun. And, and I don't necessarily just think on the women's side. Like, I think... So actually, right now I'm I'm teed up to be coaching an under 15 boys team in the U.S. In, starting in like late November when I get back, and I think that that's interesting because I think that you know everybody looks at women's players assuming that they'll coach women and like it doesn't really have to be like that. So I'm looking forward to getting these boys, uh, yeah, on the line and getting them uh, appreciating a female a female manager and seeing if I appreciate that. Well, listen, Heather, we wish you the very best of luck with it. It's a, it's a sensational story that Shelburne have been able to get somebody who has uh, three Olympic gold medals and a World Cup. And uh, it's great that you're so interested in the league to, to bring that to bear. And I'm very interested to see what might come of um, those conversations with the Shelburne chairman in the long term. Yeah, I, I am as well, and uh, yeah, looking forward to this weekend. We play Treaty United on Saturday at Tuckle Park, and it's sort of a send-off to the Champions League. Um, so hopefully as many people can come out as possible to see us off, and um, yeah, and, and join in this exciting movement right now. Well, uh, best of luck. Thanks a million for joining us, and I think there's going to be a huge crowd at Talca on Saturday afternoon. Under-16s go free. Season ticket holders can bring somebody for free as well, and overall reduced ticket prices. They want a big crowd at that game as well.